G'day everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an On The Back Wheel video. Today I am unboxing and installing Hepco and Becker crash bars onto my Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. If you're new to the channel, make sure you check out my other content and click that subscribe button, it really helps grow the channel. All right, let's get stuck in. I've been itching to get some crash bars, finally got some. Man, I thought there'd be more parts available for the V-Strom, but they've really been drip fed out and kind of slow to get out there. I've been a bit nervous riding this without crash bars. I've got a couple little scratches already, but no major damage. I mean, this is a $20,000 motorcycle, well, near enough to. I don't want to be damaging it, and you know, replacement parts could be expensive. And I've been a little bit hesitant off-road at times because you know I just don't want to go down. I don't want to damage the bike. So super keen to chuck the crash bars on. So I've gone with the Hepco and Becker crash bars. I have researched online. Number one, they're one of the only people that are doing crash bars at the moment. And number two, they look like they're really nice. They look like they fit the shape of the bike nicely. Some brands, especially on the KLR, man, they were horrendous. They are absolute eyesores. I know a lot of people prefer function over form, but I want a bit of both. So hopefully these cover both bases. They look good in photos. We'll see how they are once I get them out of the packaging and on the bike. Big box, that's for sure. But, they don't seem too big in general. And this is who I got the uh, stuff from, Motorcycle Adventure Products, or MAP as they're known. Really nice guys, give them a call or look at their website online. So, I had a look at the instructions on the line. Looks like there's some in here as well, which is good. Looks really simple, there's like four bolts. Um, maybe even six, we'll double check once I open it all up. But it looks like it's gonna be a really simple process. Dane Multirad, Dane Enstrudung. Your bike, your choice. <laughs> I believe these will also fit the standard 800, but we'll see once they get released. All right, here's the first one. Okay, that is one side there. As you can see, six bolts. One, two, three. Well, I believe it's six. Then there'll be a join in the middle here. Apologies that this is outside in the yard. I'm doing renovations at the moment and this is the best spot I can do. Here we go. Hepco and Becker. Very nice. Build quality looks extremely good. The welds are nice and smooth. Got a thick coat of paint on it or powder coating. Yeah, they look really nice. Liking them. We'll see how they look on the bike. So I've got six bolts, six washers and the connector here. So they're saying make sure you uh, mock it up first, nice and loose, which I will do. Let's see what else we got in here. Whoa, 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 whoa. So here's the instructions, everyone tells you which bolt goes where. Um, only one way to do it, I suppose. Let's get stuck in. I'll just mock it up first. Looks like this is going to be this side because the sticker is up. So that should go on the pre-existing bolts there. Okay, there's one there and one there. So that'll go there and there. And I'm not sure how this one goes yet. I'll have a good look at that. I'm gonna have to actually read the instructions here because I'm looking at it going, I don't quite understand how the top part goes. Okay, so one is actually the top. So the top is this bit up here. I'm gonna find out where that goes. So it goes on like that. I'll show you this side. It goes on like that. And they want this one on first, this top one. Let's see how we <laughs> go. This bit goes into here. You can probably do that afterwards. I'll just show you where it goes. And this smaller one goes into there. I don't know where it attaches to yet. I'll have a look. Ah, okay. All right. I know exactly where it goes now. There's an actual spot on the frame for it. I'll get out my GoPro and I'll show you guys where it is. So I'm just at the front of the bike, and I'll show you where that top bolt goes. You can see it there. I'll zoom right in on it, focus on it. That's where the bolt goes for the top of the crash bar. It's actually factory spot. It's funny because on the instructions it says, make sure you've got a uh, nice workshop environment. <laughs> I'm sitting here on the dirt. But we do what we can, right? Okay, bolt is up here. Drop everything in the dirt. I'm going to put a dab of thread locker on. It's a tiny little dab. It goes up in there, it goes in there. I'm just gonna do it finger tight. And then we'll mock up these other two spots. 
something I just learned, the big washer goes on the little bolt, so I'd take it off and put the uh, other washer on. So this middle one is the longest bolt we have. It gets a small washer as well, so I put a bit of thread locker on that, get it done. Whoa, that was generous, very generous. That's KLR generous. Okay, that one goes there. Got it. All right, got that in there. There's, it's very self-explanatory, guys. There's an actual uh, bolt holes here for all the crash bars. Um, Suzuki has designed it so you can put crash bars on it. Smaller bolt goes on the bottom. Not quite as much, but still a lot. Not quite a square, that one. It's close. There we go, got it. Yeah, that's nice and square now. All right, I'm just gonna do this like, not tight at all, see, loose. So we can square it all up with the other side. So we'll go around the other side and uh, chuck it on there. Now I know how to do it. Should be really easy doing this side, theoretically. So we're going to pop our connector on, put that in there. Bolt, thread locker, well, a bit generous again. Where's the bolt? Okay, if you can't find where your bolt is here, it's because there's a rubber flap here for some reason. Yeah, I just need to cut this tiny bit out of the front. So I'm not sure if you can see, but you can get through the hole now. Pretty easy to do, you just have to cut out that little bit. Oof. Right, let's mount this sucker. Goes up to there, you can see the hole now. That goes up there. Let's slot, slot that onto that, whatever you call it, joiner. So this is annoying. The bolt goes right behind this, where the tip of my finger is. And that is right in the way. I don't know why Suzuki put it there. I'll see if I can move it. So I've had some issues, but we got there in the end. I've mocked it up just slightly, put that one on the bottom to hold it in. Then I put it all the way up in there. There is a, I'll zoom out, there you go. Up in there is a connector. I had to push it up. I couldn't pull it down out of the way so we could mount it onto that spot there. So now I put the bolt through and then we'll square it all up and see how it looks. Okay, I managed to get that top bolt on. A little bit fiddly to be honest, just cause of that uh, connector that was in the way. But we've got it on. Now we'll put these bolts on, the thread locker again. So I need to put this one, this one. Doesn't look like it's quite as square. We'll see how it goes once I get it all up neat and tidy. This is super awkward for me right now. <laughs> Just cause I'm trying to sh sit out of the shot. I'm really struggling to get this guys. It's not quite lining up. Nah. It's not quite square everyone. Bolt's fine. Let's see if I can get it. What angle it's going to go at. So here's our predicament at the moment. Bolt hole is not quite lining up. Hmm. Just keep trying to fill it with it. I've changed tools. I was really struggling with it, trying to use an Allen key. So I've changed tools and I'm using the socket setup and I got it straight away. It's still not perfectly square. Uh, I'm just going to do it like that now i'm going to try for the bottom one oh man hopefully it's a bit easier looks like it shouldn't be too hard to line up thread locker sweet let's try and get this lined up oh, famous last words it's not perfectly square the crash bar i don't think my bike's out of square this is my torque wrench my fingers Firm, but not tight. Let's do that top one, which is 10 mil. Whew. All right, I'll go around and do the other side, then we'll see how it all looks. So there we have it, that's the Hepco and Becker crash bars all installed. Was a little bit fiddly at times, mainly because I didn't know what I was doing. 
you know, I had the instructions, but I didn't realize the bolt was all the way up there. So now you know where that is, it should make it a lot easier. And then on the other side, we had that connector that is quite difficult to get out of the way. But in the end, I was able to just push it up and it was completely fine. Then the other side, just trying to square up the bolt holes, make sure you use a T-spanner or a socket set so you can get that pressure on there and square it up and then you can screw it in. And once you're able to screw it in, it uh, squared it up really nicely. And really, it's quite a simple job to do. How do you think they look? I personally think they look really nice. They've got a balance of function and form here. The three mounting points really help. Kudos to Suzuki for doing that. They are absolutely rock solid. No doubt I'll get a bit overzealous soon and uh, <laughs> test them out, but that's what they're there for, right? They stop you from doing major damage to your bike and saving you a bit of cash. Big thanks to Motorcycle Adventure Products for supplying the crash bars. They've been fantastic to deal with. They're a small husband and wife team. It's always good to support small Australian businesses and they also ship worldwide, so make sure you check them out. So that's it for me. If you haven't, make sure you check out my other content and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Check out Motorcycle Adventure Products and let me know what you think of the Hepco and Becker crash bars down below. All right, keep it on the back wheel, everyone. Catches.